and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am streaming to you from beautiful Budapest. I hope everybody is having a safe and productive week so far. This class is for uh, members chat. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. And uh, if you'd like to become a member, just click the uh, join button beside the uh, subscribe button on our channel. In this class, we are looking at the IELTS reading section. Specifically, we're looking at the academic reading. But for general IELTS students, uh, your reading section three is very, very similar to the academic reading passages. So it's useful. Hi, Begjan. Hi, Neha. Michael, nice to see you in class. Uh, again, this is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. Join our premium package and get access to all of our materials. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. And you can get our general IELTS materials. I'll show you those websites super quick. Uh, this is the academic here with the blue background. Just click that big red button to join the premium package or click that green one to uh, try it for free. Hi, Maksud. Uh, you look very enthusiastic today based on your hello. Um, here's the General IELTS website with the green background. Click that big red button to join us there. Hi, Preeti. Hi, Pavan. Hi, Bumi. Nice to see many members joining in. Uh, students, uh, when you have access to our websites, don't forget to download, install the apps also. So Academic IELTS Help app, that links to your ahelp.com account. And for the General IELTS, the General IELTS Help app links to this account. Just look for the logos in your app stores. By linking the website and the uh, app together, you can use uh, the same materials on your phone, computer, uh, tablet. So it's super, super uh, useful and convenient. Hi, Abhishek. I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. If anybody uh, wants to ask me a question, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. All right. So students, today is a day of reading. So we have reading for members. Uh, we'll be looking at some answer strategies, and then we'll be looking at reading in the next class also, uh, we'll be looking at building up fluency, speed, and comprehension in the next class. And these will be a little bit challenging, today's reading passages. So get ready to be challenged. And of course, students, remember to use that speaking interface on the website. I was on there earlier today and chatted with a few people as well. So it's looking good. All right, everyone, let's get into this um, reading passage. For today, we're looking at this one here. This is uh, exam number three coming out of book number one. And uh, the topic here is why study philosophy? And actually, the passage starts a little bit earlier uh, with the list of headings question. Okay, so I know the uh, LOH or list of headings question is quite challenging for many students. So today, I will explain how to. Uh, do these effectively, even with a challenging topic like why study philosophy. Um, when the title of uh, an essay or passage in this case is a question, uh, clearly the essay will seek to answer this question. So a good first step before we go and look at the questions is try to think about the answer here. So. Uh, why would you study philosophy? Hi, Tito. Hi, Dr. Krishna. So try to answer this question just to s warm up your mind and uh, think of some information that can help you better comprehend the passage and the language that's being used in the passage. So why, why would someone want to study philosophy? It's, um, it's a really good question. And I know that philosophy has kind of fallen into the background for today's society, but it wasn't always that way. And I know that some cultures, like I know the uh, Indian culture, still greatly values philosophy. Uh, so uh, why would we want to study philosophy? Why study philosophy? What is the purpose of this study? 
So I'm looking for your answers here, uh, students. Why would we do that? Why would we want to study philosophy? Okay, Beck John says to know our origins. Mm, I don't. I'm not sure what you mean by our origins, Beck John. Um, Michael Fan says to change our minds, and it's interesting. Pavan says it's the importance of culture. Okay, some good ideas there. Bumi says maybe to learn about history. Okay, Abhishek, nice. So Abhishek has um, a nice insight. So Abhishek says to solve problems and communication. Okay. Uh, how many of you have heard this expression? It's a, it's kind of a famous expression. Philosophy is the father of all science. Have you heard this before? It's quite, uh, quite a famous, uh, proverb, if you will, uh, and, or statement, and uh, it's agreed and accepted by academics that philosophy is the father of all science, okay? So if you haven't heard it, then now is a good time to hear that statement. So philosophy is the father of all science, and that's true today, okay? The goal of philosophy is to logically argue truths, okay? So the simplest way uh, to uh, understand this, Michael Fan says a PhD degree comes from the concept of philosophy, a philosophical degree. That's right, Michael Fan, very good for those of you who didn't know the concept of PhD. Uh, the goal of philosophy is to logically argue the truth, all right? That makes sense uh, if you think about it as the father of all science. So another just a kind of a side note here, an anecdote. Anecdote means um, it's not directly uh, related to the topic, but it's important. So a little anecdote is uh, when you prepare for IELTS, it's a good idea to do some reading on a wide range of topics like philosophy and so on, okay? So I highly, highly recommend that, okay? All right, so uh, let's go back to the reading here. So why study philosophy? Uh, to understand the origins of science. So when one of you said to understand our origins, you can think about it to understand the origins of science, the logic of argument, the understanding of truth, these are the ideas that come to mind. Abhishek, you were right on par, and I'm not surprised you said you've heard that before. That, that's great. So uh, now we can uh, look at the list of headings questions. Uh, when you have a list of headings questions like this, okay, uh, what you want to do is for list of headings questions, read each one and paraphrase them. At home, practice paraphrasing on paper. In the exam, practice paraphrasing uh, in your mind, okay? Because in the exam, you don't have enough time. So here are a couple of um, key points for list of heading strategies, okay? So LOH, you can see some videos on the channel about this as well. So LOH strategy. Okay, number one is read these and paraphrase each one as likely you will identify the right paragraph much more accurately. Okay, uh, let's do that now. And so, uh, number one, reason as the basis for knowledge. Um, okay, I would paraphrase this as logic as the foundation 
for truth. Okay, now um, I've seen the passage before. I have practiced with this. But again, you can do this very quickly and do it as best as possible. So reason as the basis for knowledge, logic as the foundation for truth. Okay, um, if you're having trouble paraphrasing, what should you use? What kind of a tool? There's a tool that's uh, very useful and your computer has this tool and you can find this tool on Google or online easily as well. Uh, what is the tool that you can use to help you paraphrase at home when you're practicing if you get stuck? Just a quick point there, okay? And it's a great way to learn vocabulary as well. So if you have trouble paraphrasing, use a um, yeah, Rajveer. Okay. Spelling's a little bit off, but you have the right idea. Okay. Um, it's called a thesaurus. Okay. It's in your spell check, uh, category. So use a thesaurus. Okay. Sounds like a dinosaur. Easy to remember. Yeah. Roshni says use the thesaurus. Okay. So in the thesaurus, if I put the word in basis, I guarantee that you're going to get the word foundation. So basis, thesaurus, foundation, okay? All right, um, the relation between reason and math. Uh, paraphrase this for me. So what's another way to say the relation between reason and math, okay? Can you say that statement or sentence another way for me, please? Yeah, so use the thesaurus, and if you can open a thesaurus right now, that's fine. So in another window, if you use a thesaurus to check some synonyms for these words or some paraphrasing, absolutely, it's not cheating, we're practicing here, okay? There's definitely different ways to say all of these words. Okay, Rajveer, very good. So Rajveer says the link between logic and calculation. Very good, that's absolutely, there's lots of ways. So. Rajveer says the link between logic and calculation. Yeah, very good. Like the calculator, right? There's actually another way to say math as well. Pavan, very good. So Pavan says the connection between empirics, that's good too, and logic. Okay, logic for math. I like it, Pavan. That's a clever one. Okay. Calculation, that's okay as well. Uh, there's another way to say math. It starts with an A. I haven't seen anybody use it yet. Okay. We'll get there, Roshni. We're going to do paragraph or passage three today as well. Uh, another way to say math is arithmetic. Okay. Arithmetic. So the connection between logic and arithmetic, all right? So that's what we want to do. Uh, the end goals of empirical pursuits. Can you uh, paraphrase that for me in another way? So the end goals of empirical pursuits. The end goal, I think that's an easy one to paraphrase for many of you. Yeah, Dr. Krishna, connection between logic and arithmetic. That's good for that one as well. Absolutely. Okay. Um, the end goals of empirical pursuits. Uh, Rajveer says the outcomes of experiences and pursuits. Um, yeah, empirical means it's a visible truth. So that's why you're getting the paraphrase experience, Rajveer, because empirical means that we can see it to be true, okay? So the eventual aim of visible truths. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a good way to say it. Elena says, the last aim of factual pursuits. 
That's good too, Elena. Very nice. Tito says the final or the last target of visible inquiry. Very nice, Tito. Good job. So everybody's doing really nice paraphrasing these. And notice how many different ways we can paraphrase each of these. Now at home, again, you want to do this for all of the uh, possible choices, okay? So is Socrates a man or a mortal? Is Socrates uh, human uh, or uh, living, okay? Philosophy as the pursuit of knowledge and truth. Uh, philosophy as achieving uh, inquiry and reality, for example. Arithmetic against logic. Um, contrasts. Uh, using the right equipment, using the accurate equipment, or applying the accurate equipment, a central debate in education, a focused argument in pedagogy, the lack of practicality as philosophy's downfall, the uh, utility or the inability of usefulness as philosophy's uh, end or demise, for downfall, uh, the value of education in practice, the worth of pedagogy in its utility or usefulness, purity as beauty, uh, clean, simple as aesthetic, okay? So these last ones, I just quickly went over them verbally to show you what you want to do when you're thinking about these in the actual exam. So in the official IELTS exam, in your brain, just quickly think about the paraphrase as best as you can, okay? As best as you can, all right? Okay, so uh, students, good. Let's keep moving. The next step for this list of heading strategy, okay, is uh, answer these questions as you read each paragraph by asking and answering what is this paragraph about, okay? So we're going to do that in a moment. We'll just quickly look at some of the other questions to see if we should review them or not before the passage. So here we have a complete the summary using the list of words, okay? So it's a summary completion. That's fine. We can read this because it's all in the passage somewhere. So let's quickly kind of skim and read over this. You don't have to understand it 100%. Yeah, maksud, it means a list of headings, L-O-H, okay? So here we go. Uh, let's just read this. Read with me, okay? This is a reading exercise, viewers, students, so make sure to read. Okay, here we go. Uh, philosophy teaches us how to reason, which in turn can help us deconstruct something. Students schooled in the precepts of reason are able to differentiate between an argument, which follows from the given premises, and one that does not and is. Force of opinion has no impact on the of the opinion. This is because forcefulness is the wrong for the job of convincing someone of a viewpoint. In physical battles, the correct implement is. In discursive arguments, it is alone which leads to the truth. Okay, fine. Now, here we have some multiple choice questions. When you see multiple choice questions in your exam, just read this, just the question. Don't read the choices, those will confuse you. Mathematics and reason are, what differentiates philosophy from the sciences is that, and that's it. All right, and so, Let's do this. Let's answer these questions. Let's read the passage, and then we'll do the list of headings, the summary completion, 
and the multiple choice together. And we'll work through it and you'll see that it's possible with the cool, calm, collected, critical mind. Okay, here we go. So uh, let's do this. Read with me, students. There are two schools of thought when it comes to education. One side believes that education should give students tools for success in life, while the other side believes that education itself is an important goal. No area of study brings this debate to a head more than the study of philosophy. Philosophy, for those who belong to the practical side of the debate, is an utter waste of time. Philosophy provides very few tools for success in life, they say. A common question for someone studying philosophy is, what are you going to do with it? Those on the other side of the debate, those who value education for knowledge itself, can see that the study of philosophy has many important benefits. Okay, so here, what we want to do is in the exam, when you read this, you want to ask, what is this paragraph about? So what is the introduction about? Okay. And then, of course, answer it. So what is this about? If I ask myself this introductory paragraph, what is it about? What answer do you come up with? Give me your thoughts. Don't worry about being right or wrong. Just give it to me nice and fast. Okay. Um, Tito says it's about philosophy and its importance. Kind of. I think there's more in there. Elena says it's the need of philosophy. Uh, Bumi says, okay, it's an argument or debate between two groups of people. One who think philosophy is useful, others who think it's not. Yeah, Beckjohn, very good. Beckjohn says it's two schools of thought about philosophy. Yeah, so that's what I would say. So it's um, a debate about philosophy from two different sides. Okay. If I really want to be detailed, I could say those who believe it's useful and those who think it's a waste of time. That would be my really complete answer for this one. Okay. Now, your next step is now and only now find the closest match from the list of headings. So Maksud, you see that? List of headings. Everybody's got it. Perfect. So let's take a look and see if any of these choices match up with my answer to the what question, because list of headings is always what it's about. So can anybody tell me which one of these um, choices is uh, going to be the right one? Which one is the closest match? Niha says it's five. Michael Fan says it's eight. Anybody else? Okay, give me, just give me the number, uh, ladies and gents. Charlie Sen says it's seven. Okay, now we're getting a lot of answers. Yeah, eight, a central debate in education. That's what it's about. So it's the two sides, one saying that it's useless, the other saying that it's useful. So it's a central debate in education, and I agree. So for paragraph A, the correct answer, that's the closest match to this argument, because another way to say debate is argument, is the... Roman numeral eight. I agree. Okay. All right. 
So that's how we do it for these list of headings questions. When you practice it, you'll become very good at this. Um, all of our students throughout the years that have mastered practicing this strategy and using it, they all said that their list of heading scores went from only getting three, four correct out of seven or eight to getting all of them correct or maybe just one mistake, okay? So eight is definitely the best choice here. All right, uh, let's keep going and you'll see once we get the hang of it here, you'll see it's quite... Um, quite systematic. Uh, here we go. Read with me. The word philosophy derives from the Greek word for love of wisdom. Just as it was in ancient Greece, it is those people who love wisdom, knowledge, and truth who study philosophy. However, we do not live in ancient Greece, where people had slaves to do all of their chores, such as working in the fields. So what place does philosophy have in today's society? All right. Uh, again, what is this paragraph about? So let's try this one more time. Okay. So our next... Example here, what is body paragraph one about? How would you summarize what we just read? So Abhishek says it's a description of the word philosophy. Um, yeah, that's not bad, Abhishek. I think that's okay. Preeti says defining the word philosophy. Elena says it's the origin of philosophy and its current place. I really like that, Elena. So the origin of philosophy and its current place in society. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a very elegant way to put it, Elena. Good job. Yeah. Rajveer, matching up, origin of philosophy. Yeah, it's a little bit more than just defining the word philosophy, right? The trick to getting that perfect band nine in your reading section and getting all of these list of headings questions correct, and students, I promise you that you will have at least one of these in the academic IELTS, these list of headings, okay? Um, is to have the most accurate answer to the what question. So what is the paragraph about? Get the most accurate answer and you're going to be okay. All right. So uh, this one, the origin of philosophy and its current place in society. Let's take a look and see if any of them match up. So what do you think from our choices? Which one of these is the closest to what we just said there? Which one matches the best? Sometimes it's a little bit challenging. I won't lie to you. Preeti says it's number five. Okay, anybody else? All right, five seems to be the most popular answer. Yeah, it's a little bit of a tricky one. The origin of philosophy is philosophy is the pursuit of knowledge and truth. So that is the definition. So Abhishek, you are right to say definition. That's why I said it's an okay way to look at it. Absolutely. So number five uh, seems to make sense for sure. Okay. So uh, we put V into B or question 15, and then we move on. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. By the way, students, uh, another reason to do a really good job with list of headings is when you can do a really good job with list of headings and you get them correct, then there's a very good chance that you will score better for the other questions in the passage also. So list of headings helps you to understand the passage and to answer other questions, okay? So good job. Most of you realize that number five is that definition, okay? All right, uh, let's read C and we'll keep going, okay? So C, 
Again, read with me, nice and loud, students. If you have the chance, please read aloud, aloud, okay? Here we go, C. If philosophy teaches anything, it teaches the ability to reason. With reason, one can construct, analyze, and find faults in arguments. For example, if all men are mortal and Socrates is mortal, is Socrates a man? What if we change the question to, if all men are mortal and Socrates is a man, is Socrates mortal? Once a student is schooled in the ability to reason, he will see right away that these two questions are very different. As it turns out, the first one is an invalid argument, while the second is very much valid. Perhaps the next question of the skeptic is, what is the value of reason? This is a very important question. Surely, if philosophy is all about learning to reason, then an ability to reason must be a valuable trait. Arguably, the ability to reason forms the foundation for all knowledge. All right. Uh, what is this paragraph about? So next one, thanks for concurring with me, Abhishek, I saw that. So what is body paragraph two about? And I think it's quite clear. So this paragraph does quite a good job of giving us this information. And the what answer, often you'll find it in the beginning of the paragraph, but not always. Sometimes you have to understand the whole paragraph uh, to get it, okay? Uh, Tito says it teaches the ability to reason and Socrates is mortal. Um, Tito, the Socrates is mortal is just an example. So the paragraph is not about Socrates being mortal or being a man. That's just an example for the idea of reason, right? Elena says philosophy helps people, helps people's logic and teaches people to argue with knowledge. Okay. Uh, Rajvir says philosophy teaches reason. Uh, Michael Fan agrees, very similar to Rajvir. Philosophy teaches how to reason. Good. Charlie Sen says, philosophy teaches us the foundation of knowledge, which is reason. That's the missing part there, Charlie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, philosophy teaches the ability to reason which is the foundation of all knowledge, okay? So that would be my answer. Philosophy teaches the ability to reason, which is the foundation of all knowledge. Now we circle back to the beginning of the lesson with that famous quote that philosophy is the father of all science, right? So. Uh, now we get where that comes from, where that idea comes from. Okay, um, so let's see which is the closest match. So what do you think? Which one of these matches the closest? Philosophy teaches us reasoning, which is the foundation for all knowledge. Michael Fan very quickly says that's numero uno or number one, Charlie, Elena, Niha, Tito, Preeti, Bumi, all agree. And Michael Fan says, yeah, definitely number one. Um, remember when I said basis and I paraphrased this as foundation? So now, having read the paragraph, I'm very uh, certain that I have the right answer for this one. So yeah, absolutely. So here we would put in the Roman numeral one, and then uh, keep going. Okay, so good, 16. All right, let's go to the next one, a D. Okay, now we're gonna do the rest verbally. Uh, here we go, so read with me. If an individual holds an opinion which is believed wrong or incorrect, it could be important to convince them of the right opinion. There are a number of ways to attempt this. They can be 
intimidated, belittled, or bullied into accepting the opposite opinion. However, having a strong opinion does not mean the opinion is any more correct. Many people have strong opinions on all manner of subjects, but of course, strength of feeling does not correspond to validity. And it follows that someone who belittles another's opinion is not necessarily the one in the right. When two men engage in a fist fight over whose opinion is correct, the winner of the fight may not have the correct opinion, but merely the correct fighting technique. In any disagreement, the right tools must be employed. In a battle of brawn, the tool is strength. In a battle of wills, the tool is perseverance. In a battle of words, the tool is reason. When arguing with reason, facts of the matter are stated and conclusions are drawn from the facts accordingly. Okay, so what is this paragraph about? Keep it simple. In your own words, what is this paragraph about? Okay. And I'm sure you're starting to realize, hey, this is not as bad. It looked kind of scary in the beginning, philosophy, ooh, even in my own language. But now that we're reading it and we're paying attention, we're using some critical thinking, it's not so bad. So Roshni says it's the end result. Elena says it's the tool of the right opinion and how it's implemented. Yeah. Okay, Elena, you don't need the question mark there. It's a good idea. Absolutely. Uh, Charlie says it's how to debate. So how to argue. Um, Michael Fan says different battles lead to different results. Okay. It's Preeti, very nice. So Preeti says it's the equipment for the right opinion. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I like it, Preeti. That's good. Uh, Beckjan says it's changing one's mind by using the right tool, Begzan, not just necessarily bullying. It depends on the situation. Uh, Dr. Krishna says how arguments work. Um, students, one important tip, okay? So this is an important tip here. Uh, duh, 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 tip. When you give your answer to the question, what is this paragraph about? do not give a question as the answer. So even though it might seem correct, Dr. Krishna, you're saying that your answer here is um, how arguments work. Question. Um, I would change that to a statement, okay? The method of argument using the right technique. Okay, so that's what I would do, okay? So uh, a really important tip, I have seen this, it's a common mistake among students, is they ask the what question and then they end up giving um, a, a, a question answer, like what we need to do in case of a crisis or why we should learn philosophy. Okay, so don't use a question to answer the question. Uh, make it into a statement. So that instead of saying how arguments work, the method of arguments, and then finishing it with using the right technique. Okay. All right. Um, why the right technique? So notice how uh, here it says it of quite a few times. Okay. Uh, so it says that, and it even gives the example. So if you're having a difficulty figuring out what the paragraph is about. Look at the examples. So here it says, um, when two men engage in a fist fight, who is correct? The winner of the fight ha might not have the right opinion, just the right fighting technique, okay? The right tools must be used. Battle of brawn, brawn means strength, okay? Uh, the tool is strength. The battle of wills, willpower, the tool is perseverance. Perseverance means you keep going, okay? Battle of words, the tool is reason. So you see the word tool 
coming up quite a few times in this paragraph, okay? Yeah, Charlie Sen, the techniques of debate. That's much better. All right, so uh, which one of these is correct? Okay, which of these is correct? Which one would you choose from this list? I think it's going to be quite easy to figure it out now that we've talked about it so much. Abhishek says seven, which is using the right tool. And I guess most of you will agree with that. Elena does. Looks like everybody else does. And uh, of course, you're correct. Now, you see it's uh, the example. So uh, for this paragraph, paragraph D, the answer is definitely seven. They gave you this one as the example. Now, uh, here's a little interesting trick. When you're doing your practice exams from Cambridge or from our website or from Barron's books, uh, when you see these list of headings questions, don't look at the example. So try to quickly cover up the example and then only after you give the answer, check the example. If it matches, you know you're doing a good job. If it doesn't match, then you have to think, okay, what am I not doing correctly? Okay, is that, is that clear? So try to avoid looking at the example. I know that might be tough, but just try to cover it up or put a tape over it or put your hand on it and not look at it. So avoid the example, just because that will show you in your work that you're on the right track and it will give you confidence. If not, then I recommend going back in the passage and doing it again, okay? That makes sense, yeah? All right. So uh, use the example to your advantage. Now, another interesting point about the example, students, is you notice how the example is never paragraph A and never the last one. So this is also an interesting point for list of headings, is um, the example is never the introduction and never the conclusion. Why do you think that is? Does anybody have an idea? This is a quite a tricky question I'm asking you right now. So why do the IELTS people not give you paragraph A or paragraph F as the example for list of headings. A long time ago, they did, okay? A long time ago, they gave you paragraph A. So if you check Cambridge books one, two, three, maybe four um, for these questions, they always gave the introduction as the example. And then later, I think from about Cambridge book five, they changed the example to B or C or D. <laughs> Elena says to create confusion. Um, not quite. Okay. Um, yeah. So Abhishek says because it's the introduction and the conclusion and they're more challenging. So Bekjan, you're right. The introduction and the conclusion are often the most challenging uh, questions for these list of headings. Because for the body paragraphs, what the paragraph is about is usually in the first one or two sentences, usually, okay? But for the introduction and for the conclusion, you have to read and understand the whole paragraph to think about the correct answer. So conclusions and introductions are more challenging and they want you to do that on your own if you're a band eight, band nine level student. Does that make sense? Okay, I know even the explanation's a bit difficult here, but does that make sense? So they will just, they, so basically another way to say this is IELTS will just give you the one of the body paragraphs as the example because that's easier, okay? And they want to leave the challenging introduction and conclusion to you, okay? Yeah, exactly. Michael Fan says, like in writing task two, the body, the topic sentence is what the paragraph is about. Exactly. But in the introduction, it's sometimes the thesis or you have to understand the whole paragraph. Okay. Uh, Musafir, I see this message where you're asking me about are they visible. I didn't see the previous ones, Musafir. I don't know if you wrote some and I just missed it. Oh, I see, Musafir. So you're saying there's time saved for that. I don't think it's so much the time, Musaf 
fear that it has to do with. It's more just leaving the challenge for leaving um, the challenging questions up to you. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go with paragraph E and F. And so here we go. Let's keep going. Yeah, I'm, it's, uh, members, if I miss one or two of your comments, don't take it personally. I'm definitely doing my best to keep track of all of your uh, contributions. Pooja, I see you as well. Okay, um, here we go. So let's, um, let's read E. Just stay with me. Here we go. Reason is fundamental to almost every intellectual endeavor one can imagine. Just as mathematics is fundamental to almost every scientific endeavor. Maths is the language of science, just as reason is the language of discourse and debate. Accordingly, just as, sci uh, just as society needs experts in mathematics, so society needs experts in reason. The argument should follow that as we all learn mathematics as children and young adults, so we should learn the precepts of reason. Okay, uh, what is this paragraph about? So what is paragraph E about? In your own words. So here we have obviously some information about Reason and math. So Elena says, what is needed for experts? Yeah, there's a bit of that. So it's an argument that we need both mathematics and logic. Pavan says, the reasons of math and logic. Yeah. Uh, Abhishek says, the correlation between mathematics and science. Yeah, I really like that answer, Abhishek. That's really nice. The correlation between yeah charlie sen says connecting math and reason absolutely uh beck john says the similarities between math and reason fantastic yeah very good uh, very nice answers members absolutely okay um so uh, let's try to match that one up okay uh which one of these is the closest match to what you're all saying so tito says the comparison between math and science very good so which one of these matches the closest? Abhishek says two. Tito says two. Okay, yeah, two. Um, now, so again, students, this is where if somebody's just trying to answer these questions by skimming and scanning, they might accidentally write six. But here, two is definitely the better answer. Okay, so you put two. And then you keep going, okay? So Roman numeral two. Uh, make sure you use the Roman numerals for these ones in your answer sheets, okay? So Roman numeral two, and then you keep moving. Here we go. Conclusion coming up. All right. Um, so here we go. Let's do this together. Final paragraph, conclusion. Read with me. Above all, philosophy is pure. Certainly reason is useful in all areas of life, but that does not mean that philosophy's value lies only in its usefulness in the day-to-day. -day. Philosophy is the pursuit of knowledge for the sake of knowledge. There is a beautiful human quality expressed in this. Every other academic discipline is knowledge for some empirical pursuit. For example, engineering is knowledge so that we can construct buildings. Chemistry is knowledge so that we can make drugs. And biology is knowledge so that we can stay healthy. Philosophy has no tangible outcomes outside of the pure pursuit of knowledge. The only other discipline which comes close in this regard is mathematics. One is purity in numbers and the other is purity in words. What is this paragraph about? Okay. Yeah, Musafir, it, the reason why that was confusing is because it had the word math and reason in there, but it was similarities and not differences, right? Abhishek says philosophy is compared with purity. 
Uh, Preeti says, philosophy is the pursuit of logic. Uh, Elena, philosophy and reason are the same. It's not so much with math. Okay. Uh, Tito says, philosophy is a pure pursuit. That's a really nice one, Tito. Good job, Tito. Philosophy is a pure pursuit. Beckchan says, it's the purity of philosophy. It, yeah, it's the purity of philosophy and math, right? So it says math is also kind of pure. Philosophy is purity and logic. Math is purity and numbers, right? Uh, Pooja, very nice. Pooja says philosophy is a deeper dive into purity. Very good. Okay. All right. Um, so which one of these choices is the closest to those answers? Michael Fan also very good. So Michael Fan says the purity of all philosophy. Musafir, it's not so much defining philosophy and understanding math. It's more saying that philosophy is beautiful because it's pure. It doesn't have a goal uh, like making a building or making drugs or something like that. Okay. Yeah, very good. So purity as beauty, number 11, right? So here, if philosophy is purity and purity is beautiful, then this is the closest match. So everybody who thought, hey, that's probably the closest one here, that's the right answer, okay? Again, for those of you who are new to this technique, you have to practice it, all right? So those were the correct answers. So the conclusion, you can see now, what I mean that the conclusion is more challenging. It was Roman numeral 11. Okay, that was the correct answer. And uh, again, just to really quickly recap these, all right? So for list of headings questions, read these and paraphrase them before you read the passage, okay? Next, answer each of the paragraphs, each of the questions, after you finish reading it. So don't read the whole passage and then do it because that's very difficult. It's very challenging to do it that way. And of course, the key step is after you read the paragraph, ask what is it about and then give the correct answer, okay? So only after you ask what is the paragraph about and answer it, then find the match. If you're skimming and searching the choices before you think about your answer, that can really confuse you because there are some confusing choices. So don't do that, okay? It's clear, hopefully. Uh, and uh, another good point from today's lesson is don't answer the question with another question. Answer it with a statement. Is that all clear, members? Is that okay? So those were the key points. And of course, practice. In these live classes, it kind of seems easy when you start to do it, but it really requires practice, okay? Good, Abhishek, Tito, thank you for the agreement. All right, students, um, we've run out of time for this uh, summary completion, so I'll just bring that up on the screen here for a moment. Um, members, uh, you can uh, answer these uh, after class or later today or tomorrow. Send me your answers and I'll send you the answer key, okay? Uh, we just don't have time for them, unfortunately. So here are the possible choices. Uh, just go to the end of the video. Some of you have this also, of course, in your My Student account in your exams, okay? And uh, here are the... Um, multiple choice questions, okay? So um, that's it for this reading class, but don't go anywhere, uh, viewers, members. We have one more reading class coming up in about 30 minutes, which will be another uh, challenging reading passage where I will emphasize how to improve your uh, coherence, oh, sorry, your comprehension, and your fluency. So the next one will focus on comprehension fluency, okay? And that will also be a nice challenging class. Uh, so stay tuned, okay? It's a challenging Thursday academic reading. And for all of our viewers, do check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general. Um, that's it for now. See you shortly. 
Much love. Bye from Budapest.